Another type of function that you may encounter are hyperbolic functions. And hyperbolic functions share many of the same properties as trigonometric functions. We're primarily interested in three hyperbolic functions. The hyperbolic sine, which is written S-I-N-H and is pronounced sinh. The hyperbolic cosine, which is written C-O-S-H and is pronounced kosh. And the hyperbolic tan, which is written T-A-N-H and is pronounced tanch. So the pronunciation of some of these is somewhat different from how they appear. Now the graph on the left hand side of the page shows the three functions between the values of x equals minus 3 and 3. And as we look carefully, we can see that the hyperbolic sine function begins negative, And at x equals 0, it goes positive. And the shape of that graph somewhat resembles a cubic graph. Next we have the hyperbolic cosine and we see the hyperbolic cosine taking on the general form of a quadratic with a positive indice, so x squared, x to the fourth and so on. So we see that general shape. And thirdly we have the hyperbolic tan which is the third graph on here and we can see that that has two horizontal asymptotes. This one here is at minus one or y equals minus one and this one here is at y equals one. There's many different situations where the hyperbolic functions come into play. Some of the more important ones are for complex heating and complex cooling problems, but also complex vibrations may include hyperbolic functions. And another potentially useful piece of information is that the hyperbolic cosine, which is this one that's starting in this region in the top left hand corner and moving in this direction, the one that appears to be a quadratic with a positive integer, that's the shape that a hanging cable would take. So if a cable was pinned at the two ends and was allowed to hang, then that's the shape that that cable would take on. It becomes important when we look at overhead power lines and the desired tension in those power lines. On the right hand side of the screen, I've reduced the scale slightly just so we can highlight a couple of points. First of all, the hyperbolic cosine has a minimum value of one and increases from that point. Secondly, as we've already mentioned, the hyperbolic tangent has a horizontal asymptote at y equals minus 1 and another one at y equals 1 here. And that particular graph passes through 0, 0. And the same for the hyperbolic sine. We see that graph passing through the 0 point. So it just gives us a little bit more information about each of these functions. Now on to the important thing for the purpose of this learning outcome. What we need to be able to do is to rearrange and solve equations involving these hyperbolic functions. And although this is likely to sound complex, there are in fact functions on our calculators that make this a little bit more straightforward. But before we get onto some examples, let's just look in a little more detail at each of these hyperbolic functions and what they actually represent. So here we have each of those hyperbolic functions expressed in terms of the exponentials from which they're derived. So if, for example, we wanted to find the value of the hyperbolic sine of 2, what we would need to do is put 2 in in place of each of these x's. And that would give us the value of hyperbolic sine of 2. And that's a perfectly viable way to find sine 2. However, there's a function on your calculators that reads hyp. And pressing HYP will give you a list of all of the hyperbolic functions and their inverses. So pressing HYP lists hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic tan, and the inverse, or the sine to the minus 1, cos to the minus 1, and tan to the minus 1 functions. So there's no need for you to input these manually. Now the same would be true if we wanted to find cos of, say, 0.5. Well, in theory, we should place 0.5 here and here, replacing each of those x's, but there's no need to do that. We can use the hyperbolic function on our calculators and then press the corresponding button for cosh, which is number 2. So have a play around with your calculators and familiarise yourselves with those functions. Now, finally, the hyperbolic tan, similar to our trigonometric functions, is hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cos. And 
all we've done there is substitute the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cos into the formula. And when we simplify it, that's what we get, e to the x minus e to the minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. Now, all of this seems very complex, but as mentioned, for this learning outcome, all you need to be able to do is apply each of these to some different problems. And the good news is that we manage these in exactly the same way as we do a trigonometric function. So let's just look at one or two examples, just to help you to understand this a little bit better. Okay, so let's just take each of these questions in turn and have a look at how we would solve these using our calculators. Now, all of the same rules apply in terms of rearranging equations. So if we take that first question there, we have 4.5 sine x equals minus 8. So the first thing we need to do if we want to get x on its own is divide each side by 4.5. So divide by 4.5 each side. Now doing that will give us a left-hand side of sine x and a right-hand side equaling minus 8 over 4.5. Now, all of our hyperbolic functions have inverses in the same way that our trigonometric functions do. So what we can do next is we can take the inverse hyperbolic sine, or sine to the minus 1 of each side, and we'll get x equals the inverse hyperbolic sine of our minus 8 over 4.5. So we handle that in exactly the same way as we would a trigonometric function. And here's where the hyperbolic button on our calculators comes in useful, because if you press the hyperbolic function button, there'll be an option for sine to the minus 1, and it's number 4. And you'll see that your calculator will then display sine h to the minus 1, or sine to the minus 1. And then in the brackets, you can put your minus 8 over 4.5. Now, when you resolve that, you get an answer of minus 1.34 to two decimal places. And if we think back to our hyperbolic sine graph, we have something like this. And what we've just found is that when x equals minus 1.34, the value of the function is minus 8. So although it's not sketched to scale there, we get the idea that our solution is more than likely correct. So let's move on to our cosh function. And here we have 2.8 cosh x equals 11.6. Now the first thing we need to do, as before, is isolate cosh x. And we're going to do that by dividing each side of our equation by 2.8. Because when we divide the left side by 2.8, we'll just be left with cosh x. And when we divide the right-hand side by 2.8, we get 11.6 divided by 2.8, which will just be a number. However, our next step in order to get x on its own is to take the inverse cosh, or cosh to the minus 1. So we have cosh to the minus 1 each side. Now taking the inverse cosh of the left-hand side just leaves us with x. And taking the inverse cosh of the right-hand side gives us cosh to the minus 1 of 11.6 over 2.8. Now running that through the calculator gives us a value of x equal to 2.1 to one decimal place. Now the question here is, is that the only solution? Now if we sketch our cosh graph, hopefully you recall, it crosses the y-axis at 1, but it takes on this general shape like so. Now we've found a solution there that says when x equals 2.1, here, our function equals 11.6. So if x equals 2.1, our function equals 11.6. But what we can see is that there's a second solution here, and that solution will be when x equals minus 2.1. It's a mirror image again, when x equals minus 2.1. So we have two solutions there. We can check that by going to our original function, 2.8 cosh x. But instead of 2.1, I'm going to put in negative 
And when I run that through the calculator, I get an answer of 11.6, as expected. So as with our trigonometric functions, we can use our graphs or sketches of our graphs to make sure that we have all of the solutions in the given limit. OK, finally, we have an equation involving both the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cos. And we have a slight trick here because what we can do is we can determine the hyperbolic tan, which is a function that we can input on our calculators. So the first thing I'm going to do here is manipulate the equation so that I have the hyperbolic sine divided by the hyperbolic cos. And the way I'm going to do that is by dividing each side by the hyperbolic cos, or cosh x. Now by doing that, I get 3.5 hyperbolic sine x. I'm just going to write this a little bit differently over hyperbolic cos of x equals 2.8. So in effect, it's 3.5 times this here. Well, hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cos is hyperbolic tan. So I can just rewrite this as 3.5 hyperbolic tan of x equals 2.8. Now, if I'm trying to isolate x or get x on its own, my next step has to be to divide each side by 3.5, and that will isolate the hyperbolic tan of x. So hyperbolic tan of x is 2.8 over 3.5. Next, I need to take the inverse of hyperbolic tan of each side, and I'll be left with x equals inverse of hyperbolic tan, 2.8 over 3.5. And when I run that through my calculator, I get a value of x equal to 1.1.